an actual fact. That's the Trent Severn Waterway up there. This is officially Georgian Bay. I'm gonna strongly suggest that these are, or were, at least one of the lock gates. Look at all the zebra mussels on this thing. Holy moly. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. Oh, come back to the bay, Paul. It's so beautiful in the bay. Tiny, my little buddy, he fell in the water here. I gotta make this fast, just in case any cars come. Yeah, and on the other side is the grill restaurant. Hi, everybody. Here I am, back to a place where I thought I was gonna hopefully do a live stream, but it's still too chilly. It is, it's a nice day. It's above freezing, but there is a breeze and that's gonna be tough on my hands. So I'm not gonna be able to uh, wander around here with without any gloves and appropriate means with the cold wind blowing. Man, you can probably hear the wind blowing a little bit right now picking up. So no live stream today, but I'm gonna give you the second best thing is my ugly face back here where I where I alluded that I was going to come to today. And where is that place? Can you hear the running water? Yeah. Let's just spin this around. Look at that water flowing. Holy moly. Yeah, I am at Lock 45. The, actually, uh, the bottom side of Lock 45 of the Trent Severn Waterway. And uh, in, in actual fact, that's the Trent Severn Waterway up there. This is officially Georgian Bay, because this is where the Trent Severn Waterway, you probably heard me say this a million times, exits uh, onto Georgian Bay. So this is the far end. The Trent Severn Waterway starts at uh, 240 miles, 386 kilometers, that way at Trenton, Ontario. On, yeah, Trenton, Ontario, on Lake Ontario. Again, a place I've taken to uh, a few times in the past and it comes all the way up here. This is the final lock, lock 45. And this is where one comes out and I can see the boys are doing some work, which is nice. But this was the whole thrust of my coming here, just see how much open water there is. And as you can see, clearly, there's not only open water, but there's a massive amount of flow coming out here. And I was uh, suggesting Tanker Girl when we got here, when we could see the uh, water, that Parks Canada may want to keep some of that water in storage. Well, this is a little bit disappointing. As you can see, yes, not lying to you, I'm actually at Lock 45. Hold on. Yeah, this is a bummer. I had no idea that this was under construction. So it's probably a good thing that I'm not doing a live stream because there's not going to be much to see or show you anyways I was hoping to get over there along the water's edge I'm, I'm still gonna walk over there but I was hoping to be like right right next to the lock right at the lock I should say and could have shown you uh, a little bit better now hopefully that wind is not gonna be muffling too much here I apologize I pre apologize if it is and again another reason why I wasn't gonna do a, a live feed today So, as you can see, this is dirty, mucky construction up here. Not dirty and mucky, it is an improvement. And I can see by all these big blocks of wood, I'm gonna strongly suggest that these are, or were, at least one of the lock gates. Because periodically, they, you know, they gotta be replaced, they start to rot. Look at all the zebra mussels on this thing, holy moly. So that would have been the part that's below the water surface throughout the year and um, throughout the season I should say and so yeah I'm guessing they're, they're uh, replacing those one side anyways but here is the main event this is the reason I wanted to come up here today which I normally do every winter once through oops slippery once throughout the winter is just to see what the ice conditions look like and as you can see there's very little ice at all oh my surprising very surprising now of course there's always a bit of a flow through here and even on the coldest winters this is generally open just you know at this edge here because like i say all the water that's coming down through the system or at least from uh, balsam lake 
so through Lake Simcoe and all that comes to this point so there's always gonna be a little bit of a whirly swirly around here which is gonna keep it open but this is much much more this is the most open that I've seen it ever in all the years so once again I apologize if you are getting wind noise um, but it is what it is for today you can see the breeze and now I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the summer oh isn't that beautiful yes it is because we stayed here oh, two years ago three years ago so it would have been 2021 yeah we stayed here with our 330 Sundancer we stayed right on this dock for I think just one night and then carried on eastward and it was really really nice it was super windy when we got here but it, it calmed right down and the next day was just spectacular just gorgeous and I know I did some drone shots which you're probably looking at right now and it's it's definitely a nice spot to, to come here even just just staying on this floating dock without any shore power we don't need it you know we got the generator and everything that we knew we need, do need to travel we're pretty self-sufficient but we it'd be nice to come up here with the current boogaboo even if we only got this far and not actually plunked down into georgia bay now i know there's going to be some of you guys watch say oh come back to the bay paul it's so beautiful in the bay it is indeed we've been in georgia bay many times over the years um but we don't necessarily have to go there I would be happy just to come as far as here, spend a couple of weeks working our way down here and a week back. Yeah, we could do that, but I don't know. We'll see, whatever. Let uh, let fate decide when and where we get to. Now I gotta be careful <laughs> because as little snow as there on the, is on the ground, there's ice here in this little area where the boys have been driving through. Now I, I'm just gonna make mention of this um, little gazebo that they have here on the shore when we came here back in 2021 like i was just telling you about i had to bring the barbecue from the boat and put it right beside this gazebo because again it was just howling wind and just to keep the barbecue going of course anchor girl had to walk back to the boat a couple of times to get me more coronas but that's okay too and this is the spot where our uh pussycat little tiny my little buddy he fell in the water here right at the end of the dock we were sitting there uh, on the dock on chairs and he was you know he was tied up also <laughs> it's all good all side bush, all hell broke loose so he hasn't done that since and hopefully he never will and hopefully the newest little push you got the little guy mocha won't uh, have any issues like that as well but i digress as i often do in my videos i'm just gonna walk over this way and i'm gonna see if i could just get across the bridge maybe without getting in trouble or run over and see if I can show you what I can show you. Okay, I gotta make this fast, just in case any cars come, either way, because like I say, it's only a one lane bridge. Oh, there's a walkway on the other side. Okay, sorry, I'd forgotten about that. So, I'll just scooch across this bridge. Stop very momentarily. Yeah, you can see what they're doing. See, replacing the one of, one of the lock gates. I'm sure they're gonna do the other one while they're at it. Anyways, Paul, get off the bridge. There we are. Woo, safely made it. So here we go. That's what they are doing. That's what all the construction is about. Again, I'm, I'm going to strongly suspect that they're going to replace both lock gates. Uh, only this side. Oh, maybe the other side because they do have a coffer dam built on the uh, far end. So they may be able to do that as well. Well, it's very interesting. So no major construction, just a little bit of maintenance work, basically. Ah, you can hear the roar again, eh, of the water going through there. Through the chutes here at the dam. Damn! And if you look back in my past videos, you'll see where they were working on this. Uh, this dam was, dam and bridge was completely replaced. I think they started in 2015 or 16. And uh, yeah, it's all been 100% replaced. It's all brand new. So I'm just gonna get a little bit past where all this mechanical stuff is in the way. Try not to slip and fall on the ice. 
open water, lots of open water. Yeah, and on the other side is the grill restaurant. And that's where I am going to take my lovely anchor girl for a late lunch, early dinner type of thing right now when I'm done filming and rambling. But it looks pretty. Really, really nice spot. Looking forward to coming back here again. With the boat, that is. So I know what you're thinking. What happens in the summertime when there's lots of traffic through here? How do pedestrians normally cross this bridge? Well, they don't. What one would do is when you got to this part of the bridge and to the uh, actual lock, just come across here. And if both lock gates were still there and in operation, one would just actually walk right across the lock gates when they're closed, of course, either this end or that end, which would get you to the other side and then just carry on from there. Yeah, so that's it for this one. Um, I was hoping this week I was looking into making this camera. This is the uh, Osmo Pocket 2 by DJI camera. And the only way I could do a, a live stream is what I was going to get. I was looking at making this camera live streamable. And the only way I can do it uh, remotely in a situation like this is by tethering it with my phone. And unfortunately, I've only seen really bad stuff really negative stuff security issues with the app that I would need to use to make this camera work in a remote live stream type of setting so I'm not comfortable with that so I don't think I'm gonna ever do that uh, however that said I might be able to use uh, use the camera tethered to my uh, computer at home my desktop because it would just be running through the uh, oh there we go and running through the uh, Wi-Fi at home. I think I can just hook up a cable to this and have it direct so I don't have to potentially compromise my phone. So, well, whatever. We'll see. Again, this is still a learning curve for me. I've only ever done one live feed. And, um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I can use another older phone that has a little bit better audio, audio quality or stability. I don't know. But whatever. We'll see. Like I say, this is all brand new to me. And in the meantime... I'll just keep coming to you like this, the old fashioned way. All right. So that's it for that. As always, I will look forward to your comments and please ring that notification bell. Just give that a little tap and uh, that will let you know if I ever do another live stream and when it will come. All right. So from the beautiful Lock 45 of the equally lovely Trent Severn Waterway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.